So hi peeps, it's Terrace back on the old squat box once again. I'm a bit dishevelled, but then aren't I always? Uh, very shortly I will be shaving my head again to like a, a cropped number, number two or number four or something like that, you know. But um, I'm still dishevelled and grey, you know. Well, it's hard to wait, you know, I'm, I'm going to start gaining colour from my hair. <laughs> you know, but anyway, this is an update to my meditation video I made uh, quite some time ago, which actually got um, very few comments, but quite a lot of views. So, transcendental meditation, what does that actually mean? And is it of any use to you in your stressful life? Well, here's an update on uh, what I said you know, before in my previous video. Uh, mantras, gongs and incense uh, may help a very few OCD people, <laughs> but if you're a normal, ordinary person, you want to avoid having to speak, having to listen and time things, or having to smell shit, you know what I mean? The most important thing about uh, freeing your mind from the constraints of normal reality is the ability to have an imagination, to imagine things that you have never experienced. That's pretty easy today because we can all go on you know, YouTube we can all Google stuff and get videos of stuff we've never actually done and watch other people do it. But it's not the same as imagining you're doing it. It's not the same as having a, an awakening dream state, which is what meditation really is. I mean, you are awake, your mind is processing information, but it's not processing it in the same way that you would if you were actually doing a job of work or concentrating hard on solving a problem. And this is where meditation helps. For those difficult times when you keep running up against a brick wall and you can't seem to find a way to solve that problem, you know. This is where, you know, meditation really can be of a benefit to you within your normal life. And I spoke before in my previous video that one of the best things for these, these sort of you know, times when you want to free your, 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 your mind from the constraints of the society and the strict st structures that you live within, uh, you know, to free your mind and become just you as an observer of the world. Because that's, that's really what meditation is. You're becoming a, a, an observer of the world, and rather than you, uh, you know, sort of um, putting the things you see into boxes and understanding it all, you know, and then you know, filing it away in all those little spaces in your brain, what's happening is you're just observing the world and letting the observation feed back to you some sense of a new understanding. You know, that's what meditation is doing, is letting you free your mind from the constriction of what you've been told and taught and being able to see the world with a new view and with new eyes. The eyes of a baby. I don't know what's going on and I don't need to know what's going on. All I need to do is observe and make new observations. I'm making new thoughts. My brain is actually now making new thoughts and I don't control those thought patterns. So it's all, all it's almost like being in a dream where you're not in control and things happen, but you're actually recording what ha what's happening and then you can analyse it later. It's, it's taking away the analysis part of the viewing process. That's transcendental meditation, you know. Well, any kind of meditation. And that's why I say things like fire, you know, having a, 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 a live fire, burning wood or coal or peat, you know, you know you're know, you watching and you're just, you're just observing and recording 
you know, like a, a camera does, what's going on. You're not thinking about it. You're just you're just observing and recording like a camera would, and then you're going to analyze it later. You know, and and you get to that state when you're when you're observing a thing like that, where your mind does actually stop, you know, making judgments. You know what I mean? It, it stops comparing, and all it's doing now is it's just recording. That's the premise of meditation. That's the point you want to get to. You, know, you, you want to get to where I am me, but I'm not making any judgment calls, you know what I mean, of, of what I, I'm viewing, you know. And it's, it's a very blank-minded sort of um, uh, position to be in because you, you are not boxing and, and calculating and, and making judgment calls, you know what I mean. Uh, and you can do the same thing with, as I said, rain patterns in a puddle, or wind patterns through like a, a cornfield or a, a wheat field, you know, or uh, the way that the leaves, you know, make rippling dark and white green patterns as the wind blows, blows through them, or even, as I say, lying back in a field and just watching the clouds scud across the sky on a windy day. A nice windy, cloudy day is, is nice, you know what I mean? It's, it's absolutely as good as watching the wind blow through, a, you know, a wheat field, or you know, rain patterns or fire, and a, 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 you know, flames licking, changing colour in the fire, and leaping and disembowing themselves from the, you know, the, the base of the fire, and, and, and you see the flames weave the actual source of fire, and you get the flames almost dancing, in, in the air with a gap between. The, the, the fuel and the flame it is, it's it can, beautiful you know and sometimes when you when you just stab the fire which is sometimes beautiful we had a, a name for it when I was a kid when I was like no eight nine years old we used to build fires you know it's you know a bunch of four or five kids and we would we'd stab the fire and all these little bright on sparks would fly up you know with the heat of the, the air, a little tiny particles still burning would fly up, you know. We, we would call them, uh, what was it, um, fairy, uh, fairy lights, you know, little fa fairy lights, you know. They would, they would fly up and then burn out, you know, and it was like, the patterns of them as well, especially at night when it was dark, you know, you'd, you know, you'd stab the fire and all these sparks would fly up in patterns of, it's like a constellation of suns, forming and dying in, in seconds, you know what I mean? All that stuff, I remember all that from when I was a kid, you know what I mean? And they, they were some of the most peaceful times I remember, just looking at fires, watching the, the, the fairy lights fly up, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, not, not a boy in fairies, but you know, it was a name we gave them. Uh, we were kids, you know, and I still thought that fairies and goblins and, you know, angels might exist. You know, well, some of us did. <laughs> I never, I never gave the name. It was a, a friend of mine, Drew Young, uh, who's unfortunately dead now. Uh, but uh, it was him that named him. Um, yeah, he's a good friend of mine. But you know, um, transcendental meditation or any kind of meditation, it's it's basically trying to separate yourself from the, the reality that is the world. You're trying to disassociate yourself with the, the, the constraints and the, the pressures, you know, the, the, the pressures of life. Because that's really what you're trying to do. The reason you want to meditate isn't to, to get in touch with God, which when when you actually read about the, the religions with Buddhism or who actually talk about meditation, they meditate in order to become more connected with their God, right? You know, or the, their, their their idea of the, the creator, the, the the holistic universe which is, you know, all of us, you know, being part of one thing. That that's what they're trying to do, you know. And they're they're trying to separate the their emotional being from a uh, a conscious being which is is a uh, undying. You know that that they they think that they're all part of the Godhead, and the closer they can get to be to realise their connection with the Godhead and separate themselves from you know the physical real world, 
that that's what they're doing. So it's a religious thing for them. For me, meditation isn't a religious thing whatsoever. But sometimes uh, uh, I think that meditation is a way of solving problems which I can't consciously deal with in the, you know, in the real physical conscious world. Meditation for me is a way to, to free my, my mind from the constraints of the, the physical world and allow the ability, the conscious ability of my, my, my intellect, my id, to be separated from the physical world and become just me, just just me, dealing with uh, you know solutions to problems which I just can't solve. You know what I mean? In the, the the real physical world, because of the constraints that we we have in the real physical world, everything impinges on our, our mental ability to deal with problems, to to find solutions to problems. I'm not saying you know if you've got a, a huge rate, you know, problematic you no know, legal problem that if you meditate you will come up with a solution to it you know what I mean you're still going to have to hire a lawyer for that you know what I mean but there is some things you know emotional problems that we have in our lives which sometimes we just don't get the time to deal with we don't get the time to mature grow up and realize that a lot of what is causing problems in our lives are the the, the the childhood um, fixed fixed ideas that, that, that we developed as children. You know, you, you're brought up in a certain way by your family. You're brought up in a certain way by, by the community you live in. And sometimes that restrains you from being able to deal with some of the emotional problems which you find in later life. And meditation is a way to get beyond that. It's a way to, to circumvent the pre-programmed way we were brought up and allow you to find new you know, new solutions to the emotional problems you're going through and it, it will save you money going to psychologists and it will save you, you know, having to listen to the inane bullshit that you will get from many many religious people or non-religious people who say this is what you've got to do you know, breaks you free from the, the, the the fact that you no, know, your father or your mother or your grandparents, you know, dominantly telling you this is what you want to do your life. You know, sometimes we just need a, a little break from that and find our own solutions to our own emotional problems. You know, how to deal with a bully, how to deal with you know, I can't face my boss and ask him for a raise. You know, and, and it's like sometimes all we need to do is. is free our mind from the constraints of what we see as constraints and understand that you know, eventually I'm just going to have to face up to the world as it is and you can get that strength from understanding that inside of you is you you're, you're trying to find yourself you're not trying to find connection with gods connections with, with past relatives or you no know, spiritual fucking you know on my shoulder, fucking, you know, uh, spirits looking after me. No, you're trying to find yourself. And sometimes we need that, that break away from this, this insane drive to be all we can be, you know what I mean? And that should just find ourself. And, and I think that's what meditation can bring to you, you know? And we, more and more in the world that we live in, we need some time to do that. For, you can't do it for another person. You can't do it for your wife or your kids. But what you can do is you can find out how to do it for yourself and then you can encourage your children or your wife to find how they can do it. We don't all find the same way, but we all know that it is possible once you've done it. Um, I think I'll stop here and I'll do a, a part two to this. Right? Swan fucking fucking